Hello there guys, my name is Jagin P. Dwarf and welcome back to another episode of the Space Engineers Spotlights. So, what are we looking at today? Well, we're looking at a heavy cargo transport ship and this ship is by a guy called Darkbinder who yes, I did do a ship review of last time as well. And I came across this and it's newly been released and it looks phenomenal. And for a ship of what it's designed to do, is it's really, really nice. And some of the features on it really fit it and really suit it quite nicely. Now, you are going to have to excuse some of the model errors that are on um, the ship. Um, as you can see... Um, the ship is actually moving ever so slightly, and so are all the blocks. Now, I'm hoping this fixes itself when we start using some of the features on this thing, but uh, I'm unsure what the hell is going on there, and I'm, I've am i encountered a slight bug. So, this ship does have the Darkbinder-esque winglets on that he's getting famous for now, and these things look really, really sweet. They're, they're, my only problem with them is there is a single rotor holding on to this whole wing section. But I can understand where it's coming from in, you know, the fact that it's quite difficult to cover that up. But maybe with the use of blast door blocks you could possibly create a seal to protect it. I don't know. There are some ways of getting around that. But either way, the winglets look really cool. And when they rotate around as well, they look really nice. And also... This craft is very different from a lot that are on the workshop as it does allow for landing on just, you know, like on a planet. So this would probably be designed just to land on a planet. It's got VTOL on it so you could land on the planet, drop off your cargo, refill and go again. And it does have some hyperdrives in as well and all that good stuff just to make it, you know, a bit faster at getting to its destination. Now... It does have a few guns, um, nothing really special, just some, just some, you know, small cannons, just for protection while flowing around space. I think without further ado, we'll have to get into this. Now, before we do that, I just want to point out, this has got like a, like a helipad looking thing on the back, which I'm guessing is a place for you to land a small craft of some sort, maybe. And I thought that was quite cool because it's it's kind of like its its own miniature base, which is really really sweet. So to get into this, you have a button, and this button will bring down the ramp. Now, the way this works is you'll press the button and you'll hear a noise, which is really cool because you know it's it's a bit more um, human-like than uh, you know conventional well other ships where they don't have any voice or anything like that which is quite nice so we're gonna close the boarding ramp there and we've actually just opened up the other boarding ramp which takes us up to the top now we're going to ignore that for a second and we're going to go through everything on this bottom floor and we have some screens lying around as well which is quite nice and we also have some vents and stuff and some lights which i haven't got turned on at the moment and uh, it's got some nice wall lights which look really cool and really quite atmospheric, which is nice. And if we hit the button that says 11, we have lights for down here. And then we have lights for in here as well. And it lights up quite nicely. No dark spots. And we have the engine rooms either side of this main room. Now this is really cool. My only issue again is certain things aren't hooked up or... or Either they're not hooked up or not meant to be hooked up. It looks a bit weird either way. But, you know, it it, it looks okay. Um, there are a few things that could may have been placed in error. I think maybe he's got his mirroring all wrong because these, um, these tubes don't mirror properly. So we've got this mirroring issue on the sides here, but... Other than that, it looks really cool. I mean, I like these, like, separate engine rooms with the lights on and stuff. Just, you know, to make it like, you know, this is a dangerous room to be in. Don't come in here if you don't need to. You know, if it's not necessary to come in here. And we can turn off the lights back here as well so we can give ourselves a few more frames. There we go. So, as we come down here, we have the main cargo hold. Now, this thing is massive. For a small ship, this thing is ridiculous. And we do have a lot of storage containers large and small some of the azimuth ones here 
And then we have some desks. Now these desks actually stand out, which is really, really cool. And uh, you can typically tap on here and sort of maybe do an inventory of all the stuff on the ship, which is nice. And uh, yeah, it's got a lot of space. You can fit some miscellaneous items in as well, especially with the boarding ramps. You could probably fit maybe like, I don't know, some hover bikes in here or something for exploration purposes, which would be really cool. And uh, I think we'll just head upstairs now. So coming up these boarding ramps, which are really, really useful for making space. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the boarding ramp so we can just happily just wander around. Now, with these boarding ramps, I kind of figured if you took this row out here, you could actually just walk right across them, which would be quite nice. But then I rethought it and went, well, you wouldn't really want, you know, this ledge to disappear. Because what if stuff started rolling off, say, if you drop something and it started rolling down this ramp and, uh, you know, all that stuff. So it's really, really cool. Um, and it looks really, really nice and, I don't know, kind of alien-esque in here with the way the walls are and the, the detailing on the walls and things. It looks really, really quite calm and relaxing until the giant alien eats your face off. But coming in through this room, or as you come up the ramp, it, well, as you come up and around the ramp, you would be, it will be on your right side. So we've got three first aid areas here and some seats you can sit down, a bit like a nurse's office where you can age yourself and stuff and just heal up before, say you've oh no, hurt yourself and you want to wander in here. Fix yourself up and bugger off again, you can. Now, we've got a lovely little room here. Well, I say a little room, it's like an open planned room. It's got a nice high ceiling here as well. And then we've got these lovely pictures coming through the L LCD screens and they, they add that touch of home. I don't know, like if you're on a ship like this, you'd want homely things within it being as you are traveling quite far away and having this is quite nice I think uh, I kind of like the idea and we've got a nice sort of viewing platform out to the back of the ship as well we can see the large fins rising up at the back of the craft it's really really well done I, li I like this a lot I do think some of the furniture could have perhaps been colored differently to add a bit more difference but other than that I mean it's quite nice the room next to it is, of course, my favourite room in any ship. That is the toilet. And I won't spend too much time in here, but we have a nice confined toilet here. We can sit in, shower, sink, and some lovely wall detail as well. It's really, really nice in these rooms, in all fairness. It's quite, quite cosy. That's the word for it, I think. So, as we run up here, we'll have two more doors to open. And these doors are, of course, the bedrooms. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have 12 beds in total because this is mirrored on the other side which is quite nice bit of a lag spike then don't know what we've done maybe we've blown something up i don't know but we've got another few beds here it's all mirrored and it's it's a really i don't know it's really quite streamlined in the way it's designed you've got your beds and then you've got your other living quarters at the back downstairs all all business it's all strictly business you've got your cargo and everything it's really really well well streamlined as a ship so we've got this lovely room here which is quite a nice I don't know, seating area just to sort of have all your passengers because past this is the cockpit and everything and this is a quite nice, you know, area just to tell your crew members to come sit down and wait to, uh, you know, land or something. It's really, really cool. And the roof on this actually has some shutters that open and close. So if I get the right one, we can press this button and this button. And if you, say, wanted to let the sun in and let a bit of natural light in, you can open these and do that, which is really, really cool. And then, of course, we have a light switch. We can turn the lights on and off if we need them as well. So there's a few options in this ship to uh, make it a bit more homely and make it a bit more comfortable for your crew, which is really, really cool. And then, of course, opening up the main door. And, uh, you know, opening up this door is really cool because as you walk in, you've got all these consoles and pipes and things, and it's it's really nice. So we got some chairs here which do rotate. Um, I believe this is going the right way, I, I think. Um, but uh, these do rotate. I think they're... I think they're... I don't know. I, I would have expected it to come the other way, in all fairness. But that's quite weird. Either way, we've got these lovely screens in which we can tittle around on, on the uh, consoles and things and do some stuff like, you know, control parts of the ship and oxygen and all that. And then we have this lovely, lovely bench just here. We've got a stand-up cockpit again, which is really cool. 
and we got some nice nice active screens that are just telling us that jump you know jump drives are charging they're not real time charging it's just a, a picture but i like the fact that they move and it, it makes it all that better so as we jump on here we're going to turn everything on all the screens are going to turn on which is just awesome and we're going to get into this i think so what do we have for buttons in our hotbar here so we have on and off which of course we want it on um, we've got the pods, we've got the thrusters on the back, we've got the thrusters forwards, um, we've got the bay, and we've got landing gears. We've got anything else on here? Um, what's this? What is this? We've got the power cap, which I'm unsure what that does. Let's see what that does. Um, if I can get the right view on this. So I'm, I'm so maybe he's got like um auxiliary I'm I'm guessing they're auxiliary power supplies so you can you know let's let's try that again Yeah we've got like Yeah so it's like a we when we turn the power cap on it's like an ex, it's like an extra boost of power to the ship because we we go from 49 megawatts to was that 22? Oh, gigawatts. Okay, so we go from the mega to the giga. So we can increase the power by a shit ton on this ship. That is amazing, actually. So we can, if need be, just direct a lot more power to the ship when it's flying around and functioning. That, that's actually a really nice idea. I like that a lot. Let's do it. Let's, let's uh, do this. Let's do this. And let's go three. Okay, those are pretty nice. However, the model glitches are a little bit iffy for me, but that's pretty damn cool, actually. I like the shape of them. They're, they're like, you know what I mean? They're like, they're really, really nice. And the models are updating, but then they're kind of missing their mark, which is kind of sad. But overall, they actually, they've settled down there. They, they look, that looks really, really nice how it is. That, that is freaking brilliant. And then... The next thing we need to do really is, well we should have done this first, but we need to put these landing gears away as well. We can't see these landing gears like on the uh, on the first ship I, I reviewed, but let's see how these things go in as well. So we press that, model updates again quite nicely, and the wheels set inside there really well I think. They're kind of bobbing around a little bit with the hit boxes, but that's pretty cool. And then we go 8. Oh my god. That has made it for me. The fact that you can shut them off and, and keep them out of the way is... That's actually quite nice. I like that and it tidies it up a bit as well. The front ones look a bit iffy, but the back ones, they tidy up really nicely. And if he had one timer, he could make it so... One or two timers maybe? He could maybe go eight to open them and then go nine to bring them down when they are needed. But that is pretty nice. I'm going to close that back up for now. I'm going to test out these thrusters as well. So if we go back into F6. And we're going to go uh, V to zoom out. And excuse the flickering. It's a little bit weird, this craft. But as you can see, I'm, I'm jumping forwards and backwards in and out of this ship. I think it's because of the, the hitboxes and stuff on the other bits. But we've only got thrust on those back ones. We've only got a few thrusters at the moment. Now, we've got forward thrust, which I believe is... Is it six? Yep. So if we keep bumping these up, we have power to the for you know, to go forwards, which is quite nice. And we can lower this back down again, bring them down to... Uh, let's bring them down. Let's just disable them completely. And then we've got these other thrusters, which are backwards. Are these backwards? Yep. Those are the backwards to us. So we do have control over the forwards and the backwards. Only problem with these is the fact that they can be quite temperamental because if you're trying to slow down quickly, you can't do that with a system like this in place. But either way, the ship is very nice. It does turn. It's quite slow, but I understand why it's so slow. Let's try and whip this around quite quickly so we can see if we can break it. Uh. 
no, we're not going to break this thing anytime soon, I don't think. I think the world's set to not break blocks anyway. So we're going to just fail completely if we keep trying. But either way, it's a really nice craft, I think. It's a really, really nice craft. It does, again, move. it moves fairly quick, but it's nothing special. But, uh, yeah, it's really nice. Ooh, got a bit of kick back then as we jumped out of the seat. But, uh, yeah, that's 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 it. That's, that's, that's pretty much it, guys, for, for this craft. I hope you guys have enjoyed this as much as I have, because it's, it is a beautiful ship. And it deserves being spotlighted, I think. What do you guys think of it? Do you like it? What, what would you change? What would you do to this to make it better? Or, or, you know, improve on it? Tell me in the comments. Now, just before I end this video, I just want to say, I know you guys have been posting a lot of links to other ships. Um, some ships are blueprints in which I'm going through the painstaking process of downloading every mod to get them installed. And once I've done that, hopefully I will review them and check them out. So don't worry, I am reading your comments and your inboxes and everything, so... Don't worry, don't get angry, it's all gravy. And uh, if you guys want to check out some other content, we have paintballing on the go now. We've got the first paintballing video came out on Monday and it was absolutely amazing. So if you guys want to go check that out, go check it out, it's amazing. And if you guys have enjoyed this video, then please like, favorite, and of course subscribe for more. We're almost pushing 15k now guys, 15,000 people have subscribed to the channel. Almost, it's absolutely amazing. So. Like, favourite, and of course, subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video on Friday. Peace!